Today's hot tip is about why designers seem to design for skinny people. Do designers really not like oversized garments or people that are over the standard body weight? A lot of people ask this question, and I see it bounce around a lot on social media. I don't think designers like me. I don't think designers actually understand the average American body. So let's talk about this and figure out why this happens. First of all, you have to kind of understand the process that a garment goes through to get made, to really, truly understand this. You can see one of the past videos on how clothing is made in order to understand this. But to sum it up, a garment goes through a lot. There's pattern making and development, there's flats, there's specs, there's tech packs, there's taking that pattern and sizing it into different sizes, there's making a marker, there's cutting and sewing, there's all kinds of elements that are involved in the cost of the garment. One of the things that is uh, expensive and is a um, necessity is grading the pattern. Grading is sizing. Okay, so now we're getting into it. The sizing. All right, well, when a designer develops a product, they make it in one size. They make it in a middle size just so they can test it out, sew it up, make sure it fits correctly, work out all the kinks and things like that. So now you've got this perfect sample, and now you need to make it into different sizes. It's actually expensive to go from one size to the next size, and then to the next size, and then to the next size. So, in order to be able to do that, small designers usually like to limit their sizing. They wanna maybe only have to grow that pattern a couple times, because the price that it's gonna to take to grow that pattern needs to be included in the price of the garment. So if they grew that pattern 20 times to go from the smallest size to the largest size possible, can you imagine the price that it would cost that poor designer to include in the price of their garment? You would actually pay for it. Also, we got to think about marketing. Most brands of any kind, whether it's fashion or any type of product, they specialize in something. The successful business is actually one that is targeting a niche market. So if your brand is actually making clothes for apple-shaped bodies, pear-shaped bodies, hourglass bodies, extra, extra, extra small to extra, extra, extra large, you are actually breaking the number one rule of good business. You're not catering to one particular market. You're actually trying to satisfy the entire world. And you really cannot satisfy the entire world. It's actually a much better plan to satisfy a very, very small niche. I even tell people, think as specific as, okay, I'm gonna make plus size clothing for big and tall men with maybe an amputated arm. Does that sound crazy to you? Yeah, it probably does. But if you think about it, how many men in the world might that be? Well, if we have 7 billion people on the planet, maybe there's 100,000 men that fit into that category and you're the only one making clothes for them. I would say you have a good, pretty good business model doing that. So next time you think, oh, the designer isn't catering to me, think about those expenses that go into developing a product Find a brand that is catering to you and know that they're catering to you because you have a niche body. You have a specific body type and that's who they want to target.